Grace Luanga Channel for free meteorology and navigation instruments lessons. Welcome, my esteemed viewers. Welcome to lesson seven of airplane navigation instruments, a program run by Grace Luanga YouTube channel. Grace Luanga. For those watching for the first time, my name is Grace Luanga and my profile has already been given in lesson one presentation. As a reminder, in lesson six, we looked at mark meter and design, a subtopic of instruments topic. To look at the P8. So here it is in all its uh, glory. Um, it's a type of grid compass. Uh, it's a simple form of steering compass. The compass card is a cross here with a T right at this end here. And this is the this is effectively is the needle pointing towards magnetic north. So we have a south and we have a west and we have an east. And that's really how yeah, that uh, that is lined up. Um, up at the top here, you've got a line, and that's indicating the direction that the aircraft is pointing in. So that is in line with the uh, the nose of the aircraft. So that's the compass card. And then around the top, we have this rotating ring. And as you can see, it's got north, south, and then it has the degrees marked around it. Compass Dynamic Deviation I am delighted, therefore, to discuss with you today another topic from the same subtopic. Our topic today is called Compass Dynamic Deviation. Compass Dynamic Deviation is the error in reading a bearing from the compass due to the magnetic influence of the airplane in a flight mode, excluding banked turns. And when I get to a safe enough altitude, at my discretion, I'm going to turn to 360. Austin departure, Skyhawk 80991, climbing through 1,400 for 3,000 off San Marcos. Number 8991, off the departure under contact, climb and maintain 6,000, turn left, heading 300. Okay, left to 300, up to 6,000, 80991. Left turn, heading 040, shuttle 6218. But pretty light wind. Yeah. Gillespie County traffic, you got a Skyhawk 2700 turning on a right downwind for runway 14, full stop, Gillespie County. 10 degrees. Gillespie County traffic, you got a Skyhawk turning on a right base for runway 14, full stop, Gillespie County. Nice. All right. Gillespie County traffic, Skyhawk 80991 is clearing runway 14 at Bravo, Gillespie County. Front and center. It was a very short and uneventful flight out to Fredericksburg, but totally worth the food we're about to eat. Well, this is your first time at the airport diner. What do you think? Highly recommend it. <laughs> Introduction. Compass dynamic deviation is one of the most fascinating items in direct reading compass 
DRC subtopic because it is complementary to the DGI heading indicator C lesson 2. Compass dynamic deviation therefore is the magnetic equivalent of DGI total gyro drift rate. Of course, if you know the magnetic equivalent of apparent wonder, you can also compute compass dynamic deviation. Therefore, I believe that this lesson 7 would be beneficial to all of us. The magnetic compass is one of the oldest instruments installed in an airplane, and in many older aircraft, it's the only direction-seeking instrument. The compass is a self-contained instrument and does not require electricity or any other mechanism to work. The compass is normally used as a backup source of heading information, while the gyroscopic heading indicator is used as the primary heading reference. If your heading indicator fails and you understand the limitation of the magnetic compass, you should be able to navigate properly. When you are referring to a compass for heading information, remember that it is accurate only when your airplane is in smooth air and in straight and level, unaccelerated flight. Objectives of the lesson. By the end of the lesson seven, the viewer will be able to explain the following magnetic compass terms by meteorological examples where possible. Direct Reading Compass DRC E-Type Compass P-Type Compass Micro Adjuster Compass Heading Degrees Compass Horizontal Hard Iron HHI Compass Dynamic Deviation Compass Static Deviation Vertical Soft Iron VSI Acceleration Error Turning error, pioneers of the compass dynamic deviation science. Definitions. We will begin by defining horizontal hard iron, HHI, vertical soft iron, VSI, and compass dynamic deviation. Details of the definitions. First of all, it is very important to remember that the compass dynamic deviation is the magnetic equivalent to the DGI total drift rate theory. Apparent wonder due to transport wonder will occur at the same time as earth rate. In the case of transport wonder, however, the additional factor is that the gyro itself is moved across the Earth. Although Earth rate and transport wonder occur at the same time, when we come to do calculations, we calculate the error for transport wonder separately and add or subtract it to the equation for total wonder. We will look at this in more detail in the companion lesson on drift rate calculations. Horizontal hard iron HHI. Horizontal hard iron HHI is the horizontal component H of the geomagnetic field. It is related to the Coriolis parameter F by HHI equals F bracket H not over H bracket sin theta. O bracket f naught plus beta y bracket bracket h naught over h bracket sine theta the symbol theta represents aircraft heading degrees compass the term f naught represents the initial hard iron the term beta y represents the micro adjust value. If we put a compass on the surface of the equator, it will only experience the horizontal component of the magnetic field, so it will be completely balanced and will work correctly. Therefore, we can say 
that in the equator, the compass indication does not experience magnetic dip errors. Vertical soft iron VSI. Vertical soft iron VSI is the vertical component Z of the geomagnetic field. It is related to the relative vorticity parameter zeta by VSI is equal to zeta naught cos theta bracket Z over H bracket divide bracket Z naught over H naught bracket. The symbol theta represents aircraft heading degrees compass. The coefficient zeta naught represents the initial soft iron. If we put a compass on the surface of the equator, it will only experience the horizontal component of the magnetic field, so it will be completely balanced and will work correctly. However, if we place the compass closer to the North Pole, it will not only rotate horizontally, but will also tilt due to the vertical component of the magnetic field. This tilting of the compass is known as magnetic dip. Now, if we are at any point between the equator and one of the poles, the magnet will tilt due to the vertical component of the magnetic field. And although in this position the compass can still rotate horizontally, this tilting will produce errors in the compass indication under certain flight conditions. Compass Dynamic Deviation Equation Compass Dynamic Deviation is equal to minus bracket VSI plus HHI bracket. Compass Dynamic Deviation is the DRC deviation due to vertical soft iron and horizontal hard iron in aircraft motion. When we come to do calculations, we calculate the error for transport wonder separately and add or subtract it to the equation for total wonder. Special cases of compass dynamic deviation. A flight along constant latitude. The horizontal hard iron HHI remains constant during the flight. The vertical soft iron VSI does not remain constant during the flight. Note that transport wonder occurs when the gyro is transported in an easterly or westerly direction across the Earth at latitudes other than the equator. Transport wonder in the northern hemisphere is designated minus in an easterly direction and positive in a westerly direction. A flight along constant longitude. The horizontal hard iron HHI increases from zero at the equator to more or less than 15 degrees at the poles. At the equator, transport wonder will be zero. It will also not occur on flights along a north-south meridian. Dynamic deviation compensation bracket flex gate compass system bracket compensation is zero when the flex gate compass system is in free mode the compensation increases bracket and decreases bracket when the flex gate compass system is in slave mode. The remote indicating compass was developed. This instrument uses a gyro to maintain rigidity and consistency in the heading indication in the short term. 
but it also incorporates a magnetic correction system that automatically realigns the gyro with magnetic north constantly. There is a magnetic detector, also known as flux valve. The instrument in the cockpit. A horizontal gyroscope. A control panel. An amplifier. And a precession motor. Here we have a summary of how the system works, but we must say that this is not the only way in which it can operate. Everything we have seen so far corresponds to the operation of the system in slave mode. But in fact, the system has two modes of operation. The slave mode and the free mode. The free mode is used when the flux valve is inoperative or in areas where magnetic heading information is unreliable, for example when flying near the magnetic poles. Now, the control panel of the system allows to select the mode of operation and also, in case of operating in free mode, the pilot will be able to adjust the heading indication manually by using the manual heading adjustment switch, which will activate directly the precession motor. In this case, if the switch is moved to CW, the compass card will move clockwise, and if it is moved to CCW, the card will move counterclockwise. Variation of total compass dynamic deviation. When the total compass dynamic deviation is above zero, then the DRC readings will be increasing bracket and vice versa bracket. When the total compass dynamic deviation is zero, then the DRC mode will be perfect. The gyroscopic effects. These effects are rigidity in space and precession. Let's take a closer look at each of these, starting with rigidity in space. This establishes that when the rotor of the gyro spins, it remains in a fixed position in its plane of rotation regardless of the movement of the gimbals or the frame, as we can see in this example. Here, although the gimbals and frame move, the rotor remains rigid in space. We can better appreciate this effect with this other example. Here as we can see, independently of the movement of the frame or the gimbals, the rotor maintains its axis of rotation rigid in space. the vertical soft iron bracket vsi bracket of the drc there is no vertical soft iron vsi when the airplane is stationary vertical soft iron vsi tends to zero near the equator and increases towards the magnetic pole. This tilting of the compass is known as magnetic dip. And as we just said, it is not present at the equator, since in this case, the force is completely horizontal. Therefore we can say that in the equator, the compass indication does not experience magnetic dip errors. Now, if we are at any point between the equator and one of the poles, the magnet will tilt due to the vertical component of the magnetic field. And although in this position the compass can still rotate horizontally, this tilting will produce errors in the compass indication under certain flight conditions, such as accelerations or turnings. Pioneers of the Compass Dynamic Deviation Science James R. Holton Bracket 1938 to 2004 bracket. Holton was born in Spokane, Washington, and went to Harvard College, where he received a BSc. He was a highly respected professor of atmospheric sciences at the University of Washington. He was the author of the textbook called An Introduction to 
Dynamic Meteorology Bracket 1972 Bracket Thank you, Warwick. I, uh, I was a bit nonplussed this uh, summer when, uh, after I'd submitted a short abstract for this meeting, which looked like an interesting meeting, uh, I guess Warwick thought my abstract was really junk because he uh, wrote me or sent me an email saying, uh, why don't you actually give an historical overview? And I thought, well, this is kind of strange. I've actually never been much interested in the history of science. Um, ever since Jewel Charney told me that the first sign of senility in a scientist was interest in the history of his field. <laughs> and, so, uh, but uh, nevertheless, I decided to uh, try to soldier on with this, and uh, and found it a, a bit interesting. Of, of course, uh, uh, I'm a bit worried that Dr. Brewer will be able to correct me in all too many ways. But uh, we'll start off and. Uh, Welcome to Spokane, Washington. Yeah. This is in the upper right hand corner of Washington State. They have the largest urban waterfall here. We're gonna go check it out, do some rafting, and then check out some nature. Let's go. Riverfront Park Expo site from 1974. So this is the Spokane River right here. How peaceful. We start our tour of downtown Spokane at one of America's most beautiful urban parks, the Riverfront Park, which is 100 acres and developed for the 1974 World Fair. Professor G. C. Asnani, bracket 1922 to 2016. Bracket. Asnan was born in a village called Midian in the province of Sindh of undivided India. He was a WO professor of meteorology at the University of Nairobi, bracket 1974 to 1982. Bracket. In 2005, he published a three-volume mammoth treaty named Tropical Meteorology. modern history of Asia has much of its roots in a land that is home to the Sindhi people. The land of Sindh, now a formal province of Pakistan, is home to what Western academia calls the Indus Valley Civilization, better known to Sindhi people as the Sindhu Valley Civilization. People of Sindhi heritage can be found in almost every country of the world despite their small numbers. A problem solution. The following ATPL question was set by CAA and it is available in a book called Meteorology for Airplane Navigation Instruments by Gris Langa. Those of you who spend time outside probably realize that it's wise to carry a map and compass with you just in case you get turned around or need to navigate your way back home. But even more important than just carrying a map and compass is being able to use them correctly should the situation ever arise. And in order to navigate accurately using a map and compass, you need to compensate for magnetic declination. To illustrate the concept of magnetic declination, I'm using this grapefruit which symbolizes Earth. 
And this pin symbolizes the North Pole, and this pin symbolizes magnetic north. That's the Earth's magnetic field where your compass needle points to. So your compass needle is pointing here towards magnetic north, and the grid lines on your map are oriented towards true north. So if you use your map and compass and don't take into account magnetic declination, you'll actually end up over here when you were trying to get right here. Question. An aircraft flies from London, bracket, H equals 0 0.19, comma, Z equals 0 0.42, bracket, to Johannesburg, bracket, H equals 0 0.15, comma, Z equals minus 0 0.28 bracket. Coefficient B was bracket minus 3 degrees bracket. Minus 2 degrees of which was due to soft iron. And minus 1 degree of which was due to hard iron was compensated at London by means of a micro-adjuster. Determine the deviation due to this coefficient at Johannesburg on a heading of 60 degrees. One of the most basic but often overlooked pieces of equipment we have in the airplane is the traditional magnetic compass. With all of our modern avionics, sometimes it's easy to forget just how important it really is. If our AHARS or magnetometer were to ever fail, you would have to rely on the magnetic compass for heading information, which can present some interesting challenges of its own. As we remember from our private pilot training, the magnetic compass is subject to a couple of errors, those being deviation and variation. With that said, there are a couple additional errors that we need to become familiar with. These are referred to as turning errors and acceleration errors. These turning errors and acceleration errors are results of magnetic dip. Magnetic dip is the result of a magnet trying to align itself with the Earth's magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field lines are not always parallel to the surface. In fact, near the north and south magnetic poles, the magnetic field lines dip towards the center of the Earth. This dip, combined with the way the magnet is balanced inside the compass, causes turning errors and acceleration errors. When you roll into a bank, the magnet dips as it attempts to point to the magnetic pole and therefore shows an inaccurate heading until you roll out of the turn. Close to the equator, this error is barely noticeable, but in the higher latitudes when you're closer to the magnetic poles, this error is much more pronounced. To complicate matters, this error changes based on whether you're turning to the north or to the south, and if you're in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere. Don't worry though, this is aviation, and we have an acronym for everything. Time. Viewers, because of time, we may have the compass static deviation, acceleration error, and turning error items discussed in another session. Many thanks to all of you who have shared your video and sound clips with me in order to make the lesson a success. Try to solve that ATPL question and I will correct your answer. Meanwhile, those who can't find the book, you can send me an email or SMS and I shall send you the link. I am always available 24-7. Please subscribe and benefit more from our channel as I look forward to meeting you. I beg to stop here. Thank you very much for watching me and God bless you. Hello, Augies and friends worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. While this is a little bit off the beaten path, I thought you might find it interesting. I had to replace the compass on my aircraft recently, and of course having done so, what am I going to do with the old compass? Well, the answer is, take it apart. So I did.
um, what I've got is the case. This is the, the back case. This is the little, uh, there's a pedestal mount for it. Uh, this is the piece that's on the front so you can see through it. Here's the compass itself. I have not torn it down further because it's got uh, uh, special fluid inside. That special fluid is called uh, alcohol. And the reason for the alcohol is it won't form any, um, you know, green stuff, bacteria, anything like that. It is completely antiseptic.